Hello and welcome back. In this section, we're going to be talking about how to develop effective class and sequence diagram. Now, there are a couple of mistakes that I see people do when I see the class diagrams and the sequence diagrams are being written. The first one could be that they are trying to solve for more than one use case at a time, which typically doesn't work well. So one of the first things we ought to do is try and realize one use case at a time. But even if you're trying to do it for one use case at a time, the other issue that I typically see in diagrams are that the class and, uh, the, class and the sequence diagrams are typically not in sync with each other when they really ought to be. They should really be in sync because we are talking about the same uh, solution to a given problem. And it's just that we are looking at the two diagrams from two different point of views. One is giving you a static information, whereas the other one is trying to give you a dynamic information and hence they should actually be in sync. And the reason why these, uh, you know, the class diagrams and sequence diagrams are not in sync is probably because we, the approach that's actually taken. We probably go and develop class diagram for the entire thing and then move on to sequence diagrams or the vice versa. So the best way to avoid, uh, you know, the two diagrams being out of sync is to find out an approach in which uh, we can actually develop both of them in parallel. So let me do a demonstration of how to develop class diagrams and sequence diagrams in parallel. So the approach goes something like this. One of the first things we got to do is actually have a very, very good understanding about the, all the inputs that we need. So as I mentioned earlier, there are four very, very important inputs for class diagram and sequence diagrams. And the first one is about the what, which is basically we gather the information from use case and the domain models. So you have to have a very good understanding of what, which use case you're trying to solve for or realize, and you should know the domain entity or domain entities that are involved in this particular business scenario that you're trying to solve. The second very important input that you have to have a very good handle on is a technology stack. You cannot write a class diagram and sequence diagrams um, for a generic purpose or for a generic stack. You, because technology always imposes uh, certain set of constraints that come along with that particular choice of platform or languages. So you have to know the technical stack or the technology stack. The next input would be about the boundaries that I talked about as part of sequence diagrams. So that means even within a given use case, you should know the exact business scenario or the request response that you're actually trying to solve for, which will help you define that boundary. And what better way to understand that boundary rather than looking at the user interface or wireframes of the two pages that are actually involved. So once you understand your inputs at this particular level, then it actually becomes easy. And once you have this information, the last thing would be to figure out how to go uh, develop these diagrams uh, simultaneously. So I'm going to do this via an example. And I'm going to use the case study that I've been using uh, throughout this particular course. It's the ABC car rental agency. So for this particular given problem statement, I hope you guys remember the domain model. Uh, and in this particular demonstration, I'm trying to demonstrate uh, how to realize one aspect of the booking entity. And the use case that I'm actually trying to use was a sample use case that I have uh, made it available for you that you guys used as part of the use case sections. Uh, it is the return rental vehicle use case that was given to you as uh, in a PDF format in this particular file name. So this is the uh, use case and booking entity is the one that we are trying to realize as part of, uh, as part of this particular demonstration. In terms of technology stack, I'm going to assume it's a Java JE platform and I'm assuming it's a Spring MVC based framework for the MVC. Uh, presentation layer of JSP pages, business and data layer of simple POJOs, and I'm not trying to use any kind of warrants. I'm just going to use straightforward JDBC calls to go talk to the database just from a simplicity purpose, because when you're trying to learn something new, it's easy to keep them simple. Once we get hold of the basics, then you can go and add all the other changes that you basically want. to. Uh, in terms of wireframes, this are the wireframes. This is the starting page. I'm going to assume that index.jsp is the starting page of uh, a garage rep going in and logging in as part of the return rental, return rental vehicle use case. And I'm going to assume he'll be able to log into the system successfully. Once he logs in, 
we're going to take the garage rep to a home page where we're going to show him the bookings of the day. Uh, given if I'm the garage rep, the moment I log in, I basically want to see a list of all the bookings for which people are going to come and pick up the vehicle. And somewhere down below, I probably will also show these are the bookings for which uh, the end customers are going to come back and return the vehicles for the day. I'm just showing one part of it here. So I'm going to assume I'm going to show all these level of details of a booking. And that's the reason why I said this is a use case that helps you realize one aspect of the booking domain entry. So these are the two pages for which we are actually going to, uh, you know, realize class diagram and sequence diagrams for. So with this, uh, I'm going to end this video here, uh, where I've actually talked about some of the mistakes that I see in terms of class diagram and sequence diagrams, and how to correct that by using or understanding the inputs and an approach. And I've only talked about the inputs that I'm going to consider for the demo that I'm about to do in the next set of videos. Uh, and I'll end this video here and in the next couple of uh, videos I will be doing a demonstration of how to develop class and sequence diagrams for the scenario that I just defined uh, using Stario. I will see you guys later.